speak against this bill because despite its title I feel that the honourable gentleman opposite has actually misunderstood the nature of the risk to students who need to study subjects. He's in his blaming of schools and teachers, he's actually ignored the imminent prospect of A-level subjects uh, in particular uh, areas of modern foreign languages actually being withdrawn. So there will be no opportunity for students in subjects like Polish, Punjabi, Bengali, Hebrew to study for an A-level qualification at all because the A-level examination board, which is the only board which provides for these subjects, is planning to withdraw the examinations from 2017. And it's really important that we focus on this issue because the government has failed to do anything to prevent the end of the two languages which are most spoken after English in this country, that is Polish and Punjabi, from the A-level examination uh, syllabus. When this was last suggested in 1998, this House uh, put down a, uh, an early day motion and actually suggested succeeded in preventing EdXL, which was the examination board doing this at the time, from ending the A-level examination in Polish. At that time, there were 100 students studying the Polish A-level. Now there are nearly 10 times as many, and yet it is planned to be abandoned. Now, when Ofsted last looked at the teaching of modern foreign languages, which he produced a report in January 2011, it pointed out that A-level entries in modern languages increased slightly between 2007 and 2010 from 28,377 to 29,836 entries. I have to say, since that report was produced, there has been a very depressing decline in modern foreign languages. Entries to French down 3,100 and 50 entries to 9,000 entries in German, down 1,300 to 3,750. Actually, it is modern foreign languages which are the minority languages, the languages which soon will be unavailable to be examined, where there has been a significant increase in the number of students getting qualifications. So what did I do? I wrote to AQA, the examination board, and to Ofqual, and their, it, their responses. I also sent a copy to the Secretary of State for Education, who hasn't responded. Uh, the AQA uh, said that government changes to the exam system and qualifications mean that only new GCSEs and A-levels accredited, accredited by the exams regulator Ofqual can be offered by accord, awarding bodies, i.e. they're pointing to Ofqual. They uh, talk about the specific subjects that I've raised. We will be faced with a number of challenges. We know it will become increasingly difficult to recruit significant, sufficient, experienced senior examiners with assessment expertise to set and mark the four skills of reading, writing, speaking and listening. I have spoken to a senior examiner in Polish, and she assures me that there is no difficulty in finding uh, suitably qualified examiners in that subject, and yet AQA are determined to abandon it. They point out that only 983 students were, a were entered in the last year, and of course they've ignored the fact that the Polish community, which is the biggest driver for the uh, number of A-level entrants is a, a community which is growing hugely. And so this very short-sighted policy risks the children of Poles, the many thousands of Poles who have, have settled in Britain in the last years, it risks them not being able to study. So let's have a look at what Ofqual said. Because guess what? They say what is taught in schools up to Key Stage 4 is a matter for government. After this, the offering will be demand-led for the exam boards who are free, in brackets, mostly, 
to develop qualifications at A level that they wish. Well, I want the minister who's sitting on the bench to make sure that they're not mostly free to develop the qualifications that they wish that he should insist that they develop the qualifications that students need. Because if we don't study these modern foreign languages, including lang languages of growing uh, um, markets in South Asia, we will lose uh, important outward-facing uh, opportunities for the British economy. Ofqual go on to say, we at Ofqual do not derive, do not seek to limit the curriculum we do expect any GCSE, AS or A-level to be of comparable demand, i.e. they're saying that they need the same number of entrants for each subject. So guess what? At the current rate of decline, the number of entrants for Polish and French will be very similar very soon. And I imagine that for Polish and German, they will be almost the same by the time that the Polish A-level is abandoned. I think it's really important to make sure that the government uses its power to direct Ofqual. He says, the response from Ofqual says, we here at Ofqual make no judgments on what subjects ought to be taught as part of key stages of the curriculum. Well, someone needs to take responsibility for making this judgment because it's quite clear that there are sufficient examiners. The Polish University Abroad, which is based in London, runs further education courses for BA graduates in the field of teaching Polish as a second language. They don't expect any shortage of suitably qualified examiners in the near future. So what I hope that this bill could achieve if the Honourable Gentleman had actually focused on qualifications that students are prevented by government inaction from being able to obtain, what I hope that it would do is actually enable students to qualify in Polish, in Punjabi, in Hebrew, in Bengali, in all those languages which the examination boards are planning to abandon. Because if we abandon them, we can't continue to depend on the fact that English is our greatest export, is the reason why our companies can succeed so well. We actually need to recognise that in an increasingly globalised world, to compete, Britain needs access to all of those languages. And if we just look backwards, we will not succeed in obtaining the wealth that our country needs or in giving children the chance to get an A-level in a subject that they will succeed in. The Honourable Gentleman compared the approach to learning in Hammersmith and in Knowsley. I believe that one of the reasons why London education authorities are doing well in this regard is because of the very many languages which London children bring to their schools, languages which they are able to be examined in and succeed in. And if somebody has access to another language, they actually have insights which can strengthen all areas of their learning. We are about to deny a whole co cohort of children that opportunity to be examined in modern foreign languages. And actually, I wish his bill would sort out that problem rather than the one that he's talked about.